Hello, this is Arif Irfanullah. I'm the lead instructor at IFT. And in this brief clip, I'll talk about how you can prepare for the level one exam with IFT. The level one exam is based on the curriculum. So it makes sense for us to spend a few minutes to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the curriculum. First, the strengths. The CFA program curriculum is one of the best introductions to finance you will find anywhere. It is rigorous and comprehensive. The curriculum has excellent examples and practice problems, which will help you prepare for the exam and also help reinforce your concepts. And very importantly, when the CFA Institute creates the exams, it considers only the curriculum. But the curriculum also has some weaknesses. It is extremely long and at times difficult to read. The practice problems and examples in the curriculum are good, but sometimes the solutions are presented in a lot of detail. And in fact, if on the exam you start writing solutions the way they are presented in the curriculum, then chances are that you will not complete the exam on time. Another issue is that the curriculum does not have enough practice problems. So how can you design a study program which leverages the strengths of the curriculum, but at the same time helps you overcome the weaknesses? This is where IFT comes in. IFT offers a range of products and services that complement the curriculum. One of our most popular offerings is detailed video lectures. In over 70 hours of videos, we go over every section of the curriculum. We emphasize every learning outcome. And if you go over these videos, you will develop a strong understanding of the most important points in the curriculum. In addition to the videos, we also offer detailed notes. These notes are comprehensive in the sense that they cover all the sections. They also cover all the learning outcomes and concepts which are explained over many pages in the curriculum are reduced to the most important points. So if you listen to the videos and read the notes, you will get a good sense for what the curriculum is trying to explain. In fact, I'd recommend that when you go over our material, be it the videos or the notes, you have the curriculum open. This way, if you want more details on anything that we are discussing in our videos or covering in our notes, you will have the curriculum handy. We also have video lectures based on examples in the curriculum. As I mentioned before, the curriculum has very good examples, but at times those examples are long-winded. The solutions are also extremely detailed. So in these video lectures, we describe how the curriculum examples can be solved more efficiently. We also offer a comprehensive question bank. Here we have over 3000 multiple choice questions. These questions cover all the learning outcomes in the curriculum and they are based on curriculum questions. So when you do these questions, you get a good sense for the sorts of questions that you might expect on the actual exam. You can work through these questions online and we also give you the flexibility to download the questions into a PDF document. Next, we have topic exams. Once you complete a given topic such as quantitative methods or economics, you can then take our topic exams. This helps you assess how well you have understood a given topic. We also offer a high yield course. This course has three components, high yield videos, high yield notes, and a high yield Q bank. What we do here is summarize each reading in 15 to 20 minute lectures. The notes are also summarized. The idea is that once you have covered material, you will notice that in a few months you start forgetting what you've covered. And by going through a high yield material in a short amount of time, you can revise your concepts. Also, if you don't have much time left for the exam, then going through the detailed material can be time consuming. In that case, you can use our high yield course. We also offer mock exams. These should be done in the last couple of months before the exam. Once you are confident that you've completed the entire curriculum and you know the material well, you can work through CFA Institute mock exams. And if you want more practice, then you can also work through the IFT mock exams. 
And finally, we offer a service called Q&A with IFT. As you study the level one curriculum, you might have questions and IFT will be happy to help you with any issues that you have. Coming now to your study strategy. And at a high level, here is what we suggest. The first thing you should do is define a schedule. Then you need to study and practice based on the schedule. Try to get the study and practice done several weeks before the exam so that you have time for another round of review and more practice. And then in the final couple of weeks, you should do some more review and practice. Now let's take each of these in a little more detail, starting with defining your schedule. One of the most important things you do upfront is define your schedule. The amount of time that you spend depends on your background and situation. If you have a strong background in finance and you feel that you can learn concepts quickly, then three to four months should be enough. On the other hand, if you don't have a background in finance and sometimes it takes you a while to understand new concepts, then you should probably give this about 12 months. So you need to do a self-assessment to figure out exactly how much time makes sense for you. What we have done here is given a schedule for somebody who has an average background in finance. So we've also suggested the order in which you should study. You should start with quantitative methods because this provides the foundation. Many concepts that are covered here are then used in other topics. So spend about 3.5 weeks here. I've also shown the weightages and the amount of time we are recommending is based on the weightage of each topic plus the amount of material that needs to be covered. So here is the schedule that we recommend. Also notice that overall this is taking about 24 weeks. What we are talking about here is your basic study and practice. If this takes about 24 weeks, then you should spend about one month on the second review and practice and then about two weeks on the final review and practice. So that's the point I'm making here, that you should leave time at the end for review and practice. Students with no background in finance should cover the material at least twice before the final review. And that's what I'm showing over here. So you have this basic study and then one review and a second review. Obviously, if you do have a finance background, additional reviews can only help you prepare better for the exam. Just another tip in terms of defining your schedule. On our website, we offer an Excel file which shows all the readings and the IFT lectures for those readings. You can also see the amount of time for each of those video lectures. So this will give you a sense for how much time you need to spend listening to the lectures. Now this file can also help you schedule because you can put down when you plan to do a particular reading. We believe that a reading is complete when you do the practice problems from that reading. So you can identify whether or not you've completed the practice problems and you can also keep track of your status. So when you start your studies, make sure you download this file and it's a helpful tool for you in terms of staying on track. All right, your schedule should only take one or two days. Your real work here is in the study and practice phase. Now during this phase, your first activity is to understand the concepts. You can understand the concepts by looking at the curriculum, but I feel the best thing to do is to listen to the IFT videos and to read the IFT notes and use the curriculum as a reference. While you do this, you should also take your own notes. As you study a particular reading, work through the curriculum examples. And this is active learning because as soon as you study a concept, the best way to internalize that concept is to actually solve some problems. And the curriculum examples are spread throughout a given reading. They are important examples that you should try and attempt. And as I mentioned before, the IFT videos can also help you understand these examples. In the notes, you will also find IFT examples. Try to work through those examples as you are covering a particular reading. When you are done with a reading, then you should attempt the IFT question bank. In addition to the IFT question bank, you should also do the practice problems in the curriculum. You will find these at the end of every reading. Once you complete a given topic, such as quantitative methods, then do the IFT topic exam. This will help you evaluate how well you have covered a particular topic. I also recommend having a review cycle during your initial study phase. 
because you will notice that two or three months into your studies, you will forget material that you studied in the past. So spending a few minutes every week going back and revising your notes from earlier topics will be extremely helpful. The most important thing, however, is to stay on schedule. If you do not stay on schedule, then towards the end, you will not have enough time for practice and that will compromise your chances of passing the exam. Coming now to the second review and practice phase. So here you can take advantage of IFT's high yield package. You can listen to the high yield videos, read the high yield notes. Here in a very short amount of time, you can review the most important concepts. The high yield Q bank covers the most important questions from every reading. So make sure you do those. The curriculum practice problems should be done again. Now, if you've done these as part of your first review, I would recommend that you do these again because these questions give you a very good sense for what will show up on the actual exam. Also, you will have made some mistakes during your earlier study and this is a good opportunity to make sure that you have learned those concepts and that you are not making the same mistakes again. Also, work through the CFA Institute online assessments. When you log on to the CFA Institute website, you will be able to find these questions. They are organized by topic and I would strongly recommend that you do all these questions. And then we come to our final review phase. Here you can review your notes. You can also study the IFT formula sheet. At this stage, you need to make sure that you know all the formulas, you know all the facts, because this is the information that you need on the actual exam. In terms of practice, you can do the online assessments again, or if you haven't done these properly during the earlier phase, then this is a good time to make sure that the assessments are done. You must also work through the CFA Institute mock exams. These will be available on the CFA Institute website. Attempt these exams when you are reasonably confident that you know the entire curriculum. If you need more practice, then work through the IFT mock exams. So that is it in terms of the material we offer and our recommended study strategy. Now you should get the basic IFT package today and start your studies. This package is free. You can also access other free resources on our website. Once you start your studies using our free package, you might feel that you want to upgrade to a package that suits your needs. So for example, our basic package here covers the detailed videos, but the question bank is not included. If you want to use the question bank, then you will have to upgrade. And if you have any questions, please contact our support team. Thank you and best of luck with your studies.